Welcome to Off Duty. I'm Wendy Bounds. Labor Day it is just around the corner and summertime is officially coming to an end, but never fear. There is plenty to celebrate. Cooler weather after the sweltering heat. Kids are back in school, out of your hair. Whatever you are toasting and whatever your poison, we're here to lend a helping hand and even a glass. Our first stop is beer. Welcome to WSJ Off Duty. I'm Wendy Bounds, and today I have the very important and immensely difficult task of learning how to talk smart about beer. You know what? Somebody's got to do it, guys. All right, and I have the man to do it. His name is Mark Schmeda. He's the chief brewer at Chelsea Brewing Company here in New York City. Now, you've got a rainbow of beers out here. We're going to start from sort of, what, light to dark? How did you set right. them up here? Uh, least flavorful to most flavorful. Most flavorful. You know. Uh, intensity wise. All right, so I would always be gravitating just by instinct to the lightest beer because I think it would be sort of the one that would right. taste best to me. I could be wrong. What's this first one? This one uh, is called Checker Cab Blondale. It's a Kolsch style beer, and by Kolsch it means it originated in Cologne, Germany, Cologne. It's a very light and lager like beer. So this appeals to the masses. It, it accounts for about 60% of our sales. And if I'm going to say something smart about its taste when I drink it, because I, I won't sound smart, what would I say? Taste it. Let me know what you think. E equals MC squared. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it comes across as very, very light, very crisp, and clean. And this doesn't taste, and I don't mean this as an insult, it doesn't taste too dramatically different from what I would be accustomed to drinking right. something out of a bottle. And that is where you know, it's German heritage comes in, because most of the beers that uh, we have in the US have a, a German heritage. Okay. Uh, they're German style beer. Not too different color, but a little, I mean, I can see a little more murkiness to it. It's not quite as clear. Hazy. Hazy. This, uh, this beer is filtered. This beer is not filtered, but it's also a wheat beer. It's a wheat beer. Wheat contributes a lot of haze to uh, the product. And, um, you know, we like that haze. It, it really signifies what a good wheat beer looks like. 60% wheat in that beer, where this is 100% uh, barley malt. Uh, different flavor though, different it's, flavor. it's a little stronger, a little more um, intense than the other one. A little bit grainy. Yeah, a little grainy. That's grainy. A grainy, that's the word you gotta remember, grainy. So uh, that's an American style wheat beer. Okay. Uh, not to be confused with Bavarian wheats, which use a different yeast. And, and th that yeast gives them a banana clove ester, banana which uh, is, a lot of people relate to spiciness. That's Sunset Red and Amber Ale, American Amber Ale. You should be able to smell like hops in there. It should be becoming a little more mm -hmm. floral and a little more bitter. So this is more. This is definitely more bitter. So right. there are more hops in this one. More hops, okay. and there's also uh, a lot more caramel malt, which gives it that red color. And caramel malts add a, a little bit of sweetness to the beer, and then the hops counter that sweetness, the bitterness of the hops. Uh, hops are like the spice of beer. This one's a rye beer. Uh, rye malt is used in place of uh, the barley in a certain percentage. Rye malt is spicy, and sometimes uh, considered a little bit sour. I don't know if you drink rye whiskey, but rye yes. whiskey is different than, then, you know. Absolutely. Yep, grain, and then bourbon or anything, grain whiskey. right. whiskey. So you should get a little spiciness. See, uh, I like that a lot. Yeah. I wouldn't have necessarily gravitated. I would have been scared of it. So what's it right. called again? That's called Red Hop Red Rye. Hop. It's hoppy. It's hopped like an IPA, which we're going to get to next. But, but it's uh, ba the basic style is a rye. Right. Okay, got you. Very good. All right. This one is uh, India Pale Ale, Hop Angel India Pale Ale, IPA. Lots of hops in there, so you get a good hop bitterness. Not and quite the same like burst of flavor right. as in the rye, but good, there's, easy. Right, there's less specialty malts in this. Right. Uh, there's uh, one malt in there called Honey Malt and some uh, Carapils Malt, but basically, if you see color-wise, yeah. it's not that much different from nope. the light beers, but it's definitely more intense hop-wise than any of these beers. And now we're getting what, this is what I would call the manly beers, but I would probably be um, sex distancing. Yeah, a lot of women, I found a lot of women at beer shows gravitate to stouts. They do. Uh, and this, especially, this one is a stout right here. Uh, no, this, this one is the porter. Porter, and this is stout. Right. The porter, and we don't have a good light in here, but the porters are usually, if you hold up the sunlight, they're translucent. They're not opaque like a stout. And, uh, I don't know, I'm not seeing through this so yeah, much. Well, no, no, no sun, sun today. that's our other problem. <laughs> and this, and, all right, this is the porter. That's the porter, so it's not as, it's not, it's slightly like roasty. Coffee. It's like coffee Yeah, almost. slightly roasty, but then when you get to the next one, it's really say good. it's a lot like coffee. And this that's is the stout. stout. That's like the black, Guinness, ho black right. hole triple X stout. Like it's, uh, it's like a double Guinness. And that that's one's very <laughs> uh, coffee and chocolatey, dark chocolate and coffee. Cheers. So we're back here in your brew house. I mean, this is where the witchcraft is performed. This is it. I mean, the, these are the basic ingredients of beer. 
That's all you need. Four ingredients, uh, malted barley, hops, yeast, and water. No, um, no wonder so many people try it at home. That's right. Now, which of these do you think I'm going to choose to finish? Um, I may surprise you. I thought you'd take the rye. You thought I'd take the rye. I thought I would take the rye until I tasted the porter. Oh, really? All right, so you guys come back to me in about <laughs> 10 minutes. We'll see how I'm doing. <laughs> Cheers. You All pick right. one. I'm going to pick the snout. All right. Thanks, Mark. Go away now. I'm working. But if beer is not your beverage of choice, there is always wine. Have you ever felt uncomfortable, though, when the waiter pours you a sip to taste in front of everyone? We've got a few quick and easy steps to help you do it without looking, well, stupid. Best way to taste wine without looking like an <laughs> That's not it. Michael Dorff is founder of City Winery in New York. He bottles, sells, and drinks wine. He knows how to make it look good. Number one, the stare. Hold glass at an angle away from you, make eye contact with the wine. You're really actually trying to just look at the edge because you can see age based on, on how thin that gets. Number two, the swirl. Grasp by the stem, give it a good flick for 10 seconds, release its aromas. Number three, the sniff. Get that nose deep in the glass. Ah, good. Number four, sip, swish, and swallow. You're trying to aerate it, right? Because it's been in a bottle for 100 years or two years. You're trying to give it some air. And five, the nod of approval. Cautious but gracious. Don't overplay your hand. Beer and wine, we've got you covered on that. But what about my personal favorite, the bubbly? The big question is, how do you get the cork out without, well, premature poppage? Well, recently, we got a lesson on how to do it right. Check it out. Best way to open a champagne bottle? Dramatic, but wrong. The folks at City Winery in New York pop corks every day. Owner Michael Dorp, he knows the smooth moves. Number one, the unfoiling. Well, there's a little something doohickey. You look for my doohickey. You look for the doohickey. Find that tab and pull off the top, quick and clean. Job you are good, good. Number two, loosen the wire cage, but leave it on. It'll help keep your cork from popping prematurely. You can still hold the foil when you're unwrapping, right? So right. I. Even if it started to come out, I still got my... You still got it on my, this, okay. And I mean, nobody likes a premature cork. Once that's undone, now, now you want to grab it. Number three, the twist. One hand on the bottle, other grasping the top. And that's where you start to twist the bottle one way and the cork the other way. So, you know, you just do it. Keep going. A soft pop is good. A loud pop means you probably just spilled a lot of expensive champagne. Number four, the pour. This is where I get tripped up. How do you make it not but fizz over. Well, sometimes fizzing over is dramatic and nice. Okay. You just go on an angle and just try and pour it onto the side of the glass like that. At number five, the first sip. No trick to this, just hold the stem and do it. Right. Cheers. Cheers. That's it for this week's Off Duty. I hope you enjoy the rest of summer. I sure have enough to help me celebrate. I just need somebody to help me drink it. Anyone? Anyone? Hey, over here. Oh, my trusty cameraman, Jeff, he wants a drink. You deserve it, pal. Happy Labor Day.